The Empire of Hypocrisy. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. The U.S. is raging about Russia jailing a Wall Street Journal reporter on espionage charges, while the U.S. is jailing Julian Assange for doing good journalism, threatening to imprison Matt Tybee, and charging African People's Socialist Party members with propaganda crimes. Such hypocrisy is damning not because hypocrisy itself is a particularly terrible thing, but because it shows that the U.S. does not actually value press freedoms or free speech. It only pretends to in order to advance its own foreign policy objectives. It only cares about these freedoms insofar as it can rhetorically bludgeon governments it dislikes for not having them. So it turns out that after the Hunter Biden laptop leak, Tony Blinken contacted his CIA buddy Mike Morrell to make it go away, and Morrell has now admitted to cooking up the bogus Russian disinfo letter from 51 U.S. intelligence insiders to, quote, help Vice President Biden because I wanted him to win the election, end quote. Obama's CIA director just coolly admitting that he used his intelligence connections to orchestrate a PSYOP to change the outcome of a presidential election completely invalidates anything the U.S. government does under the banner of fighting election interference. Keep this in mind as the U.S. government continues churning out indictments and ramping up authoritarian measures in the name of protecting American democracy. Still stuns me that the global north is full of fully grown adults who sincerely believe Putin invaded Ukraine, completely unprovoked, solely because he is evil and hates freedom, and that the U.S. is defending Ukraine because it wants to protect freedom and democracy from tyrants. The Democratic Party is what the natural, healthy human impulse to promote civil rights and economic justice looks like after you filter it through the most powerful propaganda machine that has ever existed and put it in charge of an empire that is fueled by human suffering. The death of the 2016 Bernie Sanders campaign marked the end of any meaningful push toward economic justice in the U.S. Ever since then, all political oxygen has gone into ramping up culture war hostilities that won't put a single cent into any struggling American's bank account. Some days I hate Republicans more than Democrats because, while Democrats facilitate all the most murderous and destructive tendencies of the most powerful government on earth, Republicans do exactly the same thing while pretending they're a persecuted and disempowered group. Don't be a pro bono Pentagon propagandist. If you oppose the empire, don't preface everything you say about China, Russia, or other empire-targeted governments with of course their regime is evil and tyrannical, but those messages are already being amplified by society's most influential voices, and they get paid a lot for it. Don't do their job for free. Indie media who spend a lot of time sniping at other indie media aren't in it to fight the power or make the world a better place. They're in it to build a brand. If you're serious about this shit, you keep your crosshairs at the top of the governmental, political, and media powers. This is the dystopia you were warned about. A mind-controlled populace thinking, speaking, shopping, moving, and voting in accordance with the will of the powerful. All that's left now is to secure the few dissidents on the fringes and keep bolstering the mind-control matrix. This doesn't mean it's hopeless. It just means we've got to acknowledge reality and start working from where we're at. The biggest obstacle to real freedom is the belief that we already have it. It's important to watch out for red flags in the early stages of a new relationship, because if you don't see any, it means they're probably not a communist, and are therefore bad in bed. <laughs>